Shall Do Voices, Kelsey said, and I have been teaching fourth grade at Kuiper Elementary for five years now. Um, I have brought with me some very special guests. Um, we partner very closely with Big Brothers and Big Sisters, an organization that both myself and the high school teacher, Matt Damaris, run. And these are official matches that we have through Big Brothers and Big Sisters. They mentor and come down to our classroom. High schoolers come to our classroom um, once a week to visit the fourth graders. And we do not only academic activities, but we do um, team building um, as well. So these are partnerships that we hope we carry on. But I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Ethan, why don't you come up here first? Go ahead. Tell me your name. And his, if you want to introduce your big. This is my big Selvin Pierce. Go ahead, Selvin, come on up. Danny and Caitlin, go ahead. Stop on Caitlin. <laughs> Stay up here. Who's shy a little bit? Introduce your big. Oh, and this is Danny Zabrowski, the best big ever. Kevin, come on up. Go on the other side. Hi, I'm Kevin Roberts, and I can debate what, what she said. Well, that is the best thing ever. <laughs> His name is Trey Cecil. Thanks, Kevin. <laughs> so the reason, the reason I brought these guys with me is because I had Biggs and Little's partner this year for our video story problems that we did in our classroom. And I found that through talking with the high schoolers that the experience was just as beneficial for them as it was for my younger students. And what I heard from a lot of them was, God, if we could have done this in elementary school, then it would have been a lot easier for us. So they seemed to enjoy the experience just as much as my fourth graders did. So they'll be going around. They went through the whole process um, with them. So they have a lot of knowledge about it. They can answer any questions that you may have. And they're going to be checking your monitors to make sure that you're not on your Facebook or Twitter or anything like that. <laughs> Not really. But if you have any questions, they're here to help. But um, I'm going to start off up here. Um, I have my website. And in the back of the room, if you want to grab them, I have green sheets. And it has my email account. It has my Twitter handle. And it has my kid blog, my website address. And I encourage you at any time to contact me. If this is something you're interested in doing or trying, contact me. I've learned throughout the years that collaboration is the biggest tool you can ever have, stealing from other people, borrowing, sharing. Um, call me, tweet, email me, do whatever you need to do. But this is just a photo stream of things that we do in our classroom. Um, but I also have on my website all of the videos that um, my classroom has taken part in. And I use Vimeo, well I'm not going to play this because it will make noise, but I use Vimeo, which is also on the green sheet in the back of the room. I, there are a lot of other um, video websites that you can use to upload and stream your videos. I personally prefer Vimeo, so that's the one that I gave you. It's the first Vimeo? Vimeo, yeah. The first thing that I'm going to ask you to do today and everyone can help you, is I'm actually going to ask you to sign up for a Vimeo account. Um, so if you can log on right now, it's Vimeo.com. And the Bigs and Littles can help you with this. Go ahead and raise your hand if you need any help. And it just requires your email and set it up with a password. So last name, first name, first name, last name, and then just fill it out. Yep. Yeah. Bigs and Littles, if you could just get up and walk around to help people, just in case they need it. Yeah, I like that around. Yeah. Okay, good. Caitlin, stay right here. That's fine. <laughs> I find that when I go to conferences, they give me five or six, and just give me one that you like best. And so that's what I did for you. While you're there, just in case you're there, if you're not, um, if you can search, how did, how did you find it Spilled best? Spilled orange juice. Spilled orange juice is how you found it the most quickly. This is a video story problem. Ben Rhymes is one of my favorites. Um, 
And I have several of my kids' video story problems on, on this channel as well. I'm going to still do Ethan come around too with a packet that I have for you of resources. And on the front, there's room for ideas, connections, um, things that you want to do next, just a place for you to take notes. <laughs> Go here to search. Okay. Yeah. So this right here, Ben Rhymes, and I had the opportunity to meet him like, as if he was a celebrity, but he has, he is for me, he has started um, this channel on Vimeo that is dedicated to video story problems. And he had a challenge this year where you could do this with your classroom and upload it to Vimeo. And so this is something that I chose to partake in, and it was amazing. My kids loved it. Kids love to be on video. If you leave here, that's the one thing I want to take you to take with you. Um, whether it's math, science, language arts, at any age, they love to record themselves. That's why YouTube is so huge. They love to record themselves. Anything you can do, record them. Put them up and publish. So what's yes. the difference between this and YouTube? Um, good question. Why don't I put these on YouTube? Number one, YouTube is blocked in a lot of districts. A lot. And number two is that this, I like that I can dedicate this particular channel. And I prefer Vimeo. It's easier upload, it's safer, the privacy settings, you can okay. you can enhance videos. I just this is for kids probably. Um, it depends. Yeah. On how you that's that's your choice on how you set the settings so my kids can't and you can do the same thing on YouTube you can change your settings on YouTube to privacy to where nobody can view it except for you or only you can share it with a link to where only the people yes so <clears throat> Allison's in one of my classes if I were to videotape her while she was out in the field it seems to me that you would get a uh, she would get a uh, sort of a third person view of what she's doing Sort of like when you teach and they videotape you and, and then you go back and evaluate how you've done it and how you want to do it differently. Do the students get a chance to do that if they're doing story problems? Do they retake? Do you know take two, take three? No, generally no. Okay. We publish, I mean they do have that opportunity. If as they're videotaping, if okay. they don't like the cut that they just had, yeah. then they'll do it again and again. Okay. What I use them for is for the kids. Yeah. So you could use it as homework. You could use it as, I, I don't want to get particularly into this, but there's a trend now to the flipped classroom, yeah. and that is to where you take home, watch, listen, kind of the lecture, and then when you come back, it's all hands-on in the classroom. So that's another way that you could use it. But again, as an editing tool to look, see what you did wrong, see what you could do better the next time, absolutely. There's a million ways you could use it. I'm just trying to focus in yeah. on yeah. this real world application of math and that's exactly what it is um, i could stand up and lecture to them division or i could give them a bag of jolly ranchers and say here's your bag of jolly ranchers make a video about estimation division and it forces them to think so um, once you're on video once you're on vimeo um, i'm going to let you explore in a minute but first i want to show you this I figured 5% to you, Mama, and 25% divided between the five of us. Gina, Crowbar, myself, Tom, and the baby. That makes 5% for each one of us. Ah, uh, 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 Billy, you're cheating yourself. If there's 25% divided among the five of you, that's 14% apiece. Oh, no, listen, Mom. I, I wouldn't cheat you. You know I wouldn't. Now, look. Look here. I'll show you. I'm going to this out here. Twenty-five divided by five is five. You see, if the five won't go into two, will it? No. But five goes into twenty-five five times. You see? Oh, you're wrong, Billy. Now, now, I'm a pretty good mathematician. Now, five into twenty-five 
Five won't go into two. No. But five goes into five once. Now, we didn't use the two before, so we're going down here. Now, five into 20 goes four times. There you are. Five into 25, 14. Now, I'll unpop. Now, let me prove it to you. Now, my modification. Uh, five times five. Five times five is 25. I'm surprised you're learning. Huh? I'm surprised that you're learning. Now I'll show you. <laughs> five times 14 is 25. Five times four is 20. Five times one is five. 25. That's it. No, no, look, Mom. You, you, look, you, you're wrong there because you, you, I'll, I'll prove it to you. We'll put down four, five 14s here. 14, 14, 14. There. Now. Now, I'll prove to you by addition that, that 5 14s is not 25. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 21, 22. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, the price up, I want to see you boys cheating. <laughs> Now, the reason I chose this video is because I encourage my kids all the time to think for themselves. Discovery and exploration are huge. Um, and to talk it out. With new curriculum coming up, how many of you are teachers? How many of you? With national standards have come down where we're all going to be teaching the same thing across the board. And they want kids to explain themselves. They're so used to being fed information and then regurgitating that information. Mm -hmm. And you ask them to explain themselves and they can't. And I love this video because right or wrong, they're up there explaining themselves. And that's mm -hmm. huge. I mean, they're just, this is my way of thinking. This is my way of thinking. This is my way of thinking. Let me prove you wrong. No, let me prove you wrong. Um, Prezi is the tool that I've used for this presentation. I'm sure all of you are familiar with PowerPoint. Um, this is just a fun way, more fun, funner. <laughs> so who does the video story problems? I have teachers small. Yes, you can do them, but students big. Start with you. Um, next year, I'm expanding, and I'm going to go make an idiot out of myself with skateboards, capes, and the like, and record myself to engage students, because to me that's what it's all about. I want them to go home, I want them to watch the podcast or my video, and I want them to be excited about it. Um, and there's no better way than watching a teacher make a fool of themselves, <laughs> but in hopes of inspiring them to do it themselves. Um, just yesterday I came home, I have four children. I have an 18-year-old, a 13-year-old, a 12-year-old, a 9-year-old. And just yesterday, I came home to my son with the iPad on the garbage can propped up by a dead lily in a pot. And him and his, the neighbor boy were making videos. Unfortunately, they weren't about math. They were about, um, uh, they were reenacting a video game. But um, maybe I could get them to do math, possibly. I'm not really sure. So, but hopefully, teachers start with it. Model and inspire the kids to do it themselves. Um, what do you do first? Come up with ideas. Um, encourage the kids to do it. Sometimes it takes bravery. A lot of people don't like to be videotaped. Um, you need a video capable device. I have some of those here for you today. You are going to be making your own today very shortly. That might be out of your comfort zone, but it's easy enough. You can take one of my fourth graders if that makes you feel better. Sometimes you feel better if you have a child doing it with you. But um, a computer is nice. And props. I brought props as well. Kids love props. Um, any age. I'm finding that this component actually is even being taken more and more um, out of the equation. As I know that right now I have a Vimeo app on my phone, and it's the greatest thing in the whole entire world because I video my kids, push a button, and it uploads instantly to my website. Actually, to Vimeo, which is streamed to my website. And it's absolutely wonderful. So this computer, yes, to view by, view by others, but in order to make the video and get it published, 
All you need is video capable device. Most phones work nowadays. When can you do it? And this isn't just a school thing. Um, one thing that I'm going to do to expand my next year is I'm going to have actually have an assignment whether it's over break or when they go on vacation to do it at another location. Um, if you're in the grocery store, do it right then. If you're on the beach, find some seashells, doesn't matter. You can do lots of volume with a sand bucket, I don't know. Um, you can do it anytime. Why are we doing it? I already talked a little bit about this, high level of engagement. The traditional story problems are boring. They don't like it. They don't get it. You can stand up there and tell them as many times as you want. They're not going to get it. Some of them may. Some of them may. But especially your low, lower learners, where you're trying to meet the needs of all, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. How? Create a Vimeo account. You already did that. Just look around you and observe. And then you have to be open-minded. You have to be open-minded to create and do something different. And most importantly, publish it. When you have that video, don't leave it on your phone. The kids want to see it. They want to see how many views they have. They love it. Publish it. And that might be on YouTube if that's easiest for you. <coughs> Absolutely. You can set it to private to where they can only they can view it. There's also TeacherTube now. Um, and that's, I find, a little bit difficult to use. There's a lot of restrictions. But that's definitely an option. Um, I'm not going to show this whole video, but um, this wasn't working earlier. I'm really glad it is now. This is Ben and the story that he made for an education series, REMC. Ben, and uh, there's a lot of math and science that's around us all over the place. And if you're just observant, and well, maybe you carry around a camera like this, you might be able to capture a lot of it and use it in your classroom to help engage your students, or even use it as a way for your students to try and make sense of the world around them with what they're learning in their classroom. And that's what it's all about, making sense of the world around them. Traditional word or story problems typically aren't that engaging, and they quite often don't have any real world application to our students. The idea behind video story problems is that they're not only more engaging, but you can actually start to bring real world applications of math and science into your classroom. The concept is actually pretty simple. Basically, get some video cameras, add some students, and you can create some truly really excellent student-driven learning experiences. In other words, Rather than relying on the content and the resources that are in your textbooks that might not be very applicable to the real world, we're going to use resources from the real world and pull them into your classroom, not only to engage your students, but also to offer them something that's a little bit more applicable when they leave your classroom. So for example, if you were to go to the supermarket and here's some green peppers, two for 99 cents, that's an excellent opportunity to talk about fractions, or even to bring in some science content, talk about eating healthy and, and what good foods are. Now the steps behind creating a video story problem are actually pretty simple. The first one being carry a camera around with you. Now I carry my iPhone with me almost all the time and for anyone that has a smartphone, you can... We already talked about this a little bit. Right, okay, so here we go. Let me use the, uh, the brain. This is one of my favorites. Sure. And again, this is a 15 minute long video and I don't want to take all the time, but basically what he did here when you zoom in. was he had, they had a big breakfast and they had leftover syrup and he made it into a video story problem for the kids. And it was just wonderful. Um, if you go to your Vimeo account and go to video story problems, I'm going to give you about we really don't have that much time because we started a little bit late. I'm going to leave that open. Now that you have a Vimeo account, there's you have that opportunity to look and get examples. I am going to show you, um, Caitlin, you stand up. I am going to show you, Kate. Oops, I did have it. I'm going to show you Caitlin's video story problem. Mm -hmm. 
So what we did here is not only did I, um, we researched, we took Menard's ads, um, I let them choose a home improvement project, some of them chose a little bit differently, and we went to the next step because we, we were fortunate enough to have our bigs, we actually bust two Menards. So they were at Menards, um, they had practiced their video story problems, they had skits, and they were able to do it, do their story problems right at Menards. So. right now, but if you were to use this in your classroom, I have that on there as well. Yeah, we don't have time to grade. Yes, we right. don't have time to grade this, no. Well, that's another fabulous thing. Oh, there it is. I'm all about going green. So if you look in here, it'll help you plan it. I'm only going to give you, we only have about 10 minutes, 15 minutes, yeah. So I'll give you an example. <coughs> right, give here. us an example. I, up here, I have an empty box of ice cream sandwiches. I could use this for a fraction story problem. I could use this for a division, multiplication. I could use this for pretty much anything. Okay? So that's all of our, that's a prop? If, if, if you'd like to use this as a prop, you're more than welcome. I have spaghetti, macaroni, and cheese. Yes, I did grab this out of my refrigerator. You could also use this for science, volume, anything like that. But I also have some, if you want an idea, 
They didn't have any props, per se. I know they were at Bernard's, but they didn't have any props. You can look in here. My kids went anything from addition. I like multi-step, so that's why they started with a budget. But you can do um, addition. I bought a dog. I need to get dog food, a dog bed. Dog food is $10.39. Dog bed is $5 on sale for $3.59. They're not that cheap. And then you can add those together. But it stays open-ended. No answer is given. Got it? Yep. Play with it. This is part of it. It's out of your comfort zone and be creative. Right, awesome. <laughs> Let's do dancing. Okay. So, so, am I supposed to be? Yeah, you, uh, you can sandwiches. report it. So if we're going to do density, I need your help here. I'm going to write on this. Another one. So, math concept would be density. It's on sale for three bucks. What is the setting that you think we could use then to be in? Or what setting you would you use to explain that? Apples are great. I love the multi-step fraction. So, um, the formula. mass over volume. Yes. Density. Yes. And if we're going to do mass over volume, what mass are we using? What mass are we using? I think we're good. I love that. estimation. It can simply be an estimation problem. So, give me a mass. You don't need a lot of time. That would be volume. Like mass. Kilogram. Grams. Kilogram, grams. Okay, grams. Over a volume, which is going to be set by probably centimeters. Where's your group? Good reason, grams. Okay. So let's pick something uh, like a piece of wood. Right? And, uh, I I so if we have a piece of wood, a pencil. Um, is this pencil going to float or sink? Probably float, okay. but it has a metal. And I don't know if the ratio is float. I don't know. Um, but if you were to figure this out, you'd have to weigh it. Right? I love it. Oh, no, that's a good idea. Maybe 18 grams. Yeah, I think so. Michigan State is running the next gen conference in 28. Volume. Um, I would say half centimeter. By half centimeter, cut around. Yeah. Right. So Laura, and then the length is every day for five days. Ten centimeters. Yeah, ten. Make it easy. Yeah, ten. Yeah, ten. So, uh, two grams divided by a volume of one half no, that's right. by one half. I talked to the elementary I was negative numbers. Everybody has to do it. But what you want to realize is that you don't such things as a negative number. Well, in that square, I'm not going to get some for the If we owe somebody to do it, you can do it. 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 This is going to be where I this whole equation here is going to be less than one. Right? Publications in their a lot of different So based on that equation, because this is less than one, this will flow. Does that make sense? Because if you remember when we were doing this density in class and we were doing the rocks, we were getting densities of five. Greater than one, right? Well, yeah. Four, and they don't float. Or, um, but that makes sense? Yeah. So the reason things float is because their density is less than one. Less than one. So you know, there's also limitations. Yeah. Which yeah. means yeah. our yeah. standard that we're using is going to be low. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I also love my videos to my website and for YouTube when a video ends, ten more pop up. Okay. Mm -hmm. That could be inappropriate. Or they can click on that video yeah, or that video. Well, we talked it out. I don't know if I wouldn't do it myself. Like, you know, if we were videotaping for class. We would talk it out. It's more difficult. I know it might be published. And then you can watch it. Without worrying about those extra add-ons. 
you require three, maybe you give it on corny three. So. Yeah. I don't know. That's how, well, it would take longer time to get somebody's separate unit. Well, I could always do it. Tape us when we're doing train steps. Then we can kind of see what we're Why it's so slow. Why it's so slow. Well, to see what we're doing. I could always do the video clip. I have a camera that would do it. You know the camera that can put the big one? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. In high definition. I have a camcorder. Well, it's my own. I have one like that. Oh, good. Not that high tech. That's all right. It, it's, it, 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 his nose is good. Is there, it's a quick down. You can upload it really fast. I think that's a good idea. What do you think, son? Sure. It's going to be a two-pound. No, it, it, it depends on what so are you going to upload that if you want? Where are they uploading? Yeah, up to Vimeo. Michelle's making a good point. And she's saying that the more multi-step you get, the more difficult. Well, of course, it depends on what audience you are um, presenting to. But yeah, there's nothing wrong with being more complicated. Oh, so on your end, so on my end, he basically says, "Okay, I'm going to go to the store and get this ready, but I just also ate this many." How many are left? Yes. Yes. I don't do a video, but we do. We're not going to be on it. Yes, we do. Yours is better call. Yeah. So this is for some. Yeah. Everything. And I make it. I make it. But you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. But. But I like the short term. I, I do like the short term because I often find it on myself. I'm going to speak for myself. And then I'm over to that and everything. And over to that. Okay, so this is yours. Well, basically, How are we doing? Running short on time? Is this going to be Have you had the chance to video yourself? I know that's another part. That's another part. Teachers think they need to record themselves. I can tell myself recording. So the kids need to see it. Okay. Do you want me to do Mm -hmm. Are we videoing? Yeah, you're so yeah. You, no, use mine. Use like, 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 if I could have your eyes and ears up here on me for just a second. Do that when you're going to Trey? I know we ran short. Sorry, my life. However, we only have five minutes left, and there's a couple more things that I want to show you. If you leave here, if you leave here and you go to Vimeo, you are going to see a ton of examples. You will see math, you will see science. Okay. I also videoed my kids who did book report projects where they made puppets and the puppets presented. They loved it. You can use it for language arts, you can use it for math, you can use it for science, you can use it for crime scene investigations. You can use it for anything. But uh, I just, I want to just finish up the present that I have here. We, we recorded it so you can watch it as many times as you want. I just wanted, I wanted to finish. <laughs> well, it looks like you have to do it on your own. Make your own videos. And if you leave here and you are inspired 
to do that with your kids, I mean, that's really um, all that I was hoping for. It's just a different way of getting your kids engaged. And as Ben said, it should be a student-centered learning environment. Move away from that teacher-centered where you're standing in front and teach, teach, teaching. Give them the tools that they need to learn themselves, to discover, to explore, and to create. Because that's what it is. You want them to take everything you did teach to them and apply it. Apply it, apply it, apply it. Show me, show me, show me. That's what I tell my kids all the time. Show me, explain it, tell me. Because if they can verbalize it, show you, tell you, act it out, draw it, you know they have it. And that's what's most important. You can teach and teach and teach and give them a paper, pencil, text, which we still have to do. I'm not saying take that out of your classroom. You have to do that. You have to give them those tools. However, move away from giving it to them again. And that's what I tend to do, reteach, reteach, small groups, large group. And this is for all learners. They can make it as simple as they want or as elaborate as they want. And that differentiation is what is key, meeting the needs of all your students. So I'm gonna, any questions? We only have a few minutes left. Any questions? Yes? Well, I teach here at the college, and Allison and Sam are actually my students. And what I found, we often do, I do field ecology right now with these guys, and they go out in the field and do a bunch of stuff. And I'm often asking them to reflect on what they've done. Mm -hmm. And I think this is an opportunity, you just have to figure out how to film them while they're doing stuff, to, so they can reflect while watching themselves. I think that'll be very powerful. And what a wonderful tool for you to see their thought process yeah, yeah. while they're out. Yeah. How did they come to this end product, whatever yeah. that may be. Yeah. Yes. Anybody else? Even if you don't want to video do your own, it's a great resource that you can use. Oh, absolutely. Just mm -hmm. use it. If you wanted to get on Vimeo right now, you could show your kids and you could use those. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But it's if you just put it in their hands, you'll be amazed at what they come up with. You will be amazed. And you'll see some of these kids, they do drawings and hold it up and show it on the video story problems with that. That's why I wanted you to set up that Vimeo account. I hope that you go back and look at that. All right, so if all of you guys could just take two minutes to fill out your evaluation forms and hand them to me on your way out. 